In today's discussion, we are going to discuss about uh, the anatomy of the radial nerve as well as its clinical importance. The radial nerve is one of the major peripheral nerve of the upper limb. So in this session, we will discuss about uh, the course of the radial nerve as well as what is the clinical importance of it. So the radial nerve arises from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus behind the third part of the axillary artery because exactly behind the third part of the axillary artery the posterior cord gives off two terminal branches one is the axillary nerve and another one is the major nerve which is the radial nerve with a root value of c5 to t1 so here the radial nerve totally gives off two branches one is sensory and another one is motor so if you see the sensory branches of the radial nerve it innervates most of the skin of the posterior side of the forearm and dorsal surface and uh, the lateral side of the palm and lateral three end of digits and if you talk about the motor innervation overall it innervates the triceps brachii which extends the elbow and also the majority of the extensor muscles in the forearm which extends the wrist and fingers and also supinates the forearm now let us concentrate on anatomical course of this nerve so with this diagram let me explain the entire anatomical course of the radial nerve. So here the radial nerve is a continuation of the posterior cord of the brachial plexus which I already mentioned earlier. It is therefore contain fibers from all the nerve roots C5 to T1. And the nerve arises in the axillary region where it is situated posterior to the axillary artery. And it, it is also related to the posterior wall of the axilla because of the most posterior course of the nerve. It exits the axilla inferiorly via a triangular interval and supplies the branches to the long and medial head of the triceps brachii. Here the radial nerve as it descends, the radial nerve wraps around the humerus laterally and supplies a branch to the lateral head of the triceps brachii during much of its course within the upper arm. And it is accompanied by the deep branch of the brachial artery, which is the profunda brachii artery. From the arm, it enters into the forearm, where the radial nerve moves anteriorly over the lateral epicondyle, where it is anterior to the lateral epicondyle. But when we studied about the ulnar nerve, which was posterior to the medial epicondyle, right? So the nerve reaches the anterior aspect of the forearm that is anterior to the lateral epicondyle of the humerus through the cubital fossa. Here, the nerve then terminates totally into two branches. One is the deep branch, which is motor, which innervates most of the muscles in the posterior compartment of the forearm. And the superficial branch, which is sensory, which mainly contributes to the sensory innervation of the hands and the fingers. Now, let us see what are the motor functions of the radial nerve. The radial nerve innervates the muscles which are mainly located in the posterior upper arm and the posterior forearm which is called as the extensor compartment of the upper limb. In the upper arm, it mainly innervates three heads of the triceps brachii which acts to extend the arm at the elbow. So the radial nerve also gives rise to branches that supply the brachioradialis, extensor carpi radialis longus which are the muscles of the posterior forearm. And when we talk about the terminal branches of this nerve, a terminal branch of the radial nerve, which is the deep branch, which mainly innervates the remaining muscles of the posterior forearm. As a generalization, we can say that these muscles mainly act to extend at the wrist and finger joints. And also, it is responsible for the supination of the forearm. Mainly, the supinator is uh, innervated by the radial nerve. And note one important point over here. When the deep branch of the radial nerve penetrates the supinator muscle of the forearm, it is termed the posterior interosseous nerve for the remainder of its course. So this is what you need to know about the motor functions. Now next are the sensory functions of the radial nerve. So remember that there are totally four major branches of the radial nerve that contributes or I can say that provides the cutaneous innervation of the skin of the upper limb. So these are the totally three branches which arise in the upper arm. 
One is a lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm, which mainly innervates the lateral aspect of the arm, that is below the deltoid muscle. Next is a posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm, which mainly innervates the posterior surface of the upper arm. And next is the posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm, which innervates a strip of the skin down the middle of the posterior forearm. So finally, the fourth branch, which is called as the superficial branch. It is the terminal division of the radial nerve where it innervates the dorsal surface of the lateral three end of digits and their associated palmar area. This is what you need to know about uh, the sensory branches. So after discussing about uh, what are all the motor as well as sensory branches which are innervated by the radial nerve, let's talk about the clinical relevance and what are the possible signs and symptoms which are mainly associated with the injury to the radial nerve. So here, injury to the radial nerve can be broadly categorized into four groups depending on where the damage has occurred and thus which components of the nerve have been affected what we need to know in this module. Let us talk about what about the injury to the nerve in the axilla. The radial nerve can be damaged in the axilla by the dislocation of the shoulder joint. One important point what you need to know here is the dislocation of the shoulder joint may be anterior, posterior or inferior. Out of all the three types of dislocation, inferior dislocation of the shoulder is more common because of the deficiency of the capsule inferiorly. So whenever there is an inferior dislocation of the shoulder joint, the nerve which gets injured is the radial nerve as well as the axillary nerve. Not only that, the radial nerve will also get injured by the fracture of the proximal humerus and occasionally it is injured via excessive pressure on the nerve within the axilla, example by crutches. And what are the motor as well as sensory functions which are damaged or lost during this type of injury? The motor functions such as the triceps breaking and muscles in the posterior compartment are affected. And in this condition, the patient is unable to extend at the forearm, wrist and fingers. And unopposed flexion of the wrist occurs known as wrist drop as you can see in this picture. So these are the motor functions which are lost during the radial nerve injury at the axilla. And what about the sensory functions? All four cutaneous branches of the radial nerve are affected and there will be a loss of sensation over the lateral and posterior upper arm, posterior forearm and the dorsal surface of the lateral three end of digits. This is what you need to know about uh, the clinical anatomy of the injury of the radial nerve in the axilla. Next, let us see what are the signs and symptoms and the case presentation if the radial nerve gets injured in the spiral groove or the radial groove which is seen at the posterior aspect of the mid shaft of the humerus. The radial nerve is tightly bound with the radial groove of the humerus. Therefore, it is most susceptible to damage with the fracture of the humeral shaft. Now, what are the motor functions which are compromised uh, during uh, this type of injury? The triceps brachii may be weakened, but it is not paralyzed as we saw in the damage of the nerve in the axilla. And also the branches to the long and medial head of the triceps arise proximal to the radial groove. That is the reason the triceps brachii may be weakened but not get paralyzed. As well as if you see the muscles of the posterior forearm are affected the most. Because of this the patient is unable to extend at the wrist and fingers and also unopposed action or we can say unopposed flexion of the wrist occurs which is known as wrist drop. So what are the sensory functions which are lost during uh, the spiral groove injury of the nerve? The cutaneous branches to the arm and forearm have already arisen above the level of spiral groove itself. Therefore, the superficial branch of the radial nerve will be damaged resulting in the sensory loss on the dorsal surface of the lateral three end of digits and their associated palmar areas. So this is what you need to know about uh, injury of the nerve uh, in the spiral groove. Now, 
What about the injury of the nerve in the forearm? There are two terminal branches of the radial nerve located in the forearm. That is what we discussed. One is the deep branch and another one is the superficial branch. As you can see in this table, during the injuries like stabbing or laceration of the forearm, the superficial branch may get damaged. But the damage of the deep branch is more commonly associated with the fracture of the radial head or the posterior dislocation of the radius. This is the mechanism of injury at the forearm to the deep branch as well as the superficial branch. Now, what are the motor functions which are lost? Already I told you that the superficial branch is the sensory branch. So whenever the sensory branch is injured, so there are obviously no motor loss because it is not innervating any muscles. But if the deep branch is involved in the injury, majority of the posterior forearm muscles are affected and the wrist drop does not occur. So now let us concentrate on what are the sensory changes which are seen if there is an injury to the superficial branch of the radial nerve. The sensory changes or the loss affecting the lateral three end of digits and uh, associated palmar area. But there are no motor symptoms because of the nerve is sensory in nature. This is what you need to know about uh, the clinical anatomy or the clinical presentation about uh, the radial nerve injury.